plea that I have um, tried to uh, tried to ignore, <laughs> ignore it from this distance. I, I do want to ask you why? Why this kind of act that some people describe as sort of a national act of self-immolation? Uh, and, and I thought about uh, this sort of regular affronts to this imperial fantasy that apparently some in England at least, have. So on Friday we saw the British Navy couldn't even protect a British tanker in the Strait of Hormuz and we heard the wonderful voice of the British captain. Mm. Would you mind not seek seizing our tanker? <laughs> Please don't do it. And they said, yes, we're going to. And they said, oh, drought, you know. Um, and it was Britain, wasn't it, that pulled out the China Graph pencil with the French and drew the jolly lines in the Middle East. Drew a line and said, that's Syria and that's Palestine and that can be Jordan. And I wonder, now they can't even protect one measly ship. Is that <laughs> part of what this is about? Oh, I mean, honestly... I, <laughs> I can't... I, honestly, I know it's funny on one level, but I'm just... I'm, I'm sort of ashamed to be British at the moment. I travel around the world. We're a global laughing stock. Taxi drivers. Taxi drivers say to you, what the hell is happening to your country? We used to be taken seriously all over the world. OK, we weren't, we're not ruling the waves anymore. But, you know, as you said, Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown's role in the, in the financial crisis. John Major actually has emerged in the last few months over this Brexit issue as, you know, figure of real credibility and, and strength of argument. And we've now got... I'm afraid this is a populist... This is the populist virus that we've got to check. Trump today, Trump, I mean, the guy has got no hold on truth whatsoever. He stood up today, and I'm glad he did it, because it's going to really damage Boris Johnson. He said, British people love me, they want a British Trump, they've now got a British Trump. He then made, invented these figures about that Nigel Farage had won in the, in the elections. These people lie, they co-opt, the, and, the, and the tragedy of this, we've been talking about the most vulnerable people when we talk about mental health. The tragedy of this is that these liars and charlatans who are the establishment, they are the elite, by pretending that they're anti-establishment for the people, the people who are going to get hardest hit are those people who voted for Brexit and those people who voted for Donald Trump. And this populist virus, it's, it's dangerous. And I got, I got you know, called out by some of the papers the other day when I, when I said on Q&A that I thought we really had to be careful about the seeds of fascism that are being sown but they are attack, you know, attacks upon the, the, the freedom of the press, attacks upon the judiciary. Anybody who criticises you isn't a critic, they're a liar and they're a traitor. Ta saying to women of, four women of colour, go back to your own country when three of them were born and raised in the United States. Boris Johnson. And, you know, I was asked in an interview earlier today about what his approach will be on Iran. His only experience on Iran is now languishing in a psychiatric jail in Iran because he helped put her there by not controlling the detail, not being on top of the detail and not controlling what came out of his mouth. I mean, I'm, you know, I mm. hate to say this because I'm actually... I am deeply proud to be British. I'm incredibly patriotic. But at the moment, I'm starting to feel ashamed. And I've known this guy for over 30 years. Have you? We were journalists together. Yeah. He was on the, the, the Times and Telegraph. I was on the Mirror. Then he was a journalist covering the Labour government that I was part of with Tony Blair. He made his name as a journalist by making up stories, not least about the European Union, banning bent bananas and all this sort of nonsense. He got sacked by the Times for lying. He got sent to Liverpool to apologise for this ridiculous thing that he'd written about the Hillsborough disaster. He wins a referendum on a pack of lies and he now become Prime Minister right. on another set of pack that, of lies. That is an it's utterly shameful. It's interesting the kind of fake news element to this. Boris has, as we heard, been criticised for being fast and loose with the truth when he was a reporter in Brussels writing on the EU, particularly with Jan saying the EU wants to standardise condom sizes, not oh, true, I mean... and warning Britons their prawn crisps could be banned. Now, on the BBC's Desert Island Discs some years ago, he boasted about the effect he had. Everything I wrote from Brussels, I find was kind of... I was just chucking these rocks over the garden wall. I listened to this amazing crash from the greenhouse next door over, over in England. As every, everything I wrote from Brussels were having this amazing explosive effect hmm. on the Tory party. And it really gave me this, I suppose, rather weird sense of, of power. Oh, thanks. 
But why did it take off, Tracy? Why did the editors of other newspapers reportedly, according to a piece in the New York Times, bring up their reporters and say, well, that's a great yarn, that's, that's getting lots of clicks? Well, and they'd say, well, that's actually not true, boss. I, I can only um, wonder myself because I'm not English, um, because this is an English problem, I think, that we've been lumbered with. And to go back to... You're great, Scottish and I'm, Scotland voted to remain. Absolutely, I'm from Scotland. And the reason I'm in Australia is because, thank God, to Thatcher's Britain, because we in Scotland had the poll tax. My dad was made redundant three times in one year as the car factories shut down one by one by one. No chance of employment in the 80s as a young woman. And someone who was, you know, brought up well and went to a good school and there was no hope of me getting work. So this is an English thing. I don't understand what the heck is going on. And it was the great rock and roll swindle that our vote um, to, for independence happened before bloody Brexit. Because I know, my daughter lives in England actually, but she was saying, oh God, I hope Scotland stays um, in the Union because we don't want to lose being part of Europe. And mm. then this happens. I mean, it's, it's so frustrating. And mm. my dream is to actually go back and work with Nicola Sturgeon. No, I think the SNP are a fantastic... Scottish National Party. Yes, the Scottish National Party. And they Nicola are Stur inspirational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she has been very clear. Scotland did not vote for Brexit. They didn't vote for a Tory government. And we're stuck with this rubbish. OK, now, well, Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, congratulated Boris Johnson and said she'll, she'll do everything she can uh, to uh, help the new Prime Minister. But then she went on to say this. Uh, but, of course, I, I can't deny it. It would be hypocritical to deny the fact that I have profound concerns about the prospect of Boris Johnson as Prime Minister. You know, the vast majority of people in Scotland, had they been given any choice, which they weren't, wouldn't have chosen to hand the keys to number 10 to somebody with Boris Johnson's views and track records. Just a quick comment from you, Tracy. What do you think are the prospects that uh, Scots will be so turned off by jo Boris Johnson that they might reconsider the issue of independence? Oh. In other words, as the New York Times God, noted, so. is this the end of the UK? Well, it, it's the next logical piece, isn't it? Because actually leaving the European Union, particularly with no deal, is a, a deadly decision. It is a really poor decision for the UK. So Scotland should go it alone and they can always negotiate to be part of the EU because I've seen Nicola Sturgeon get a standing ovation from the EU. Mm. Can, I, can I chip in here? The, mm. the other thing that I could see, I don't want this to happen necessarily, but listen, I agree. I, the, the last, the, the independence referendum in Scotland, I went up there and I worked very, very hard to campaign for Scotland to stay part of the United Kingdom. I, I'd, I now don't know really what my view is because I think that the... I'm, my, my parents are both Scots. I'm, my, my blood Lucky is... Lucky you. I'm <laughs> Scottish, yeah. yeah. I, I see myself as British first, then Scottish. I've never felt English. And you're absolutely right. This is English nationalism right. that's driving this. Mm. Can, can and and the other, the other yeah. part of the United Kingdom is Northern Ireland. Yes. Northern Ireland yes. can leave as well. Hey, Northern Kingdom. England, Alistair. Northern <laughs> England. <laughs> Let's get really down to it. Kate Carnell. Sorry, are we forgetting about democracy here? <laughs> you know, that... that, um, that How that... is this democratic? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just this, making guys, a comment that the Brits did vote for Brexit. They, they did didn't vote, vote for, for Brexit. This. They didn't vote sorry, for this mess. Sorry. So you believe, Alistair, I'd be really interested, if there was an election tomorrow, Jeremy Corbyn would be elected. No. Do you know what? I don't know the answer to that. I think this is why well, I think... Well, that's actually... the question. OK, let me answer the question the way I want to. I think there's now only three ways <laughs> this is going to go. No deal, an election, which I don't think will produce a result because at the moment I think the country is fed up with both main parties and wants yeah. to punish them for the mess that we're in. So then, this is where you get the break-up of the United Kingdom. What happens if that election... And Johnson will think he can win an election because he's an arrogant, yeah. you know, what's it... So let's say that election ends up with a result where the bigger main party can only form power through an alliance, say, with the SNP and the Liberal Democrats. And let's say the SNP's demand is we want a referendum on uh, Scotland's independence. And the, and, the, and the Liberal Democrats' uh, demand is that we want a referendum on, on Brexit. You know, there's more chaos to come. That's why the best thing to do, Theresa May should have done it, in my view, I've tried my best. We've gone this for three years. It hasn't worked. I think it's time to put it back to the people. Do they still yeah. want to go ahead? And, and, that's and what would happen? End. And what would happen if it if it was Remain, another re referendum on if Brexit? If we had another referendum, 
I am absolutely it's convinced right. for all the lies, for all the propaganda that will get pumped out, Remain will win because yeah. there's a, we talk about a, there's a silent majority in Britain that is feeling exactly as I feel now. Nobody voted for this mess. Nobody mm. voted to be a global laughingstock. Nobody voted for this clown to be prime minister. And the country's had enough of it. Mm. Except